Hi, how's it going everyone? Welcome to another React Native authentication tutorial with Firebase. In today's video, we'll be implementing phone authentication on an iOS application. So recently I put out a video on how to implement phone authentication in React. If you're interested, you can have a look at that video. And today we'll be pretty much doing the same uh, on an iOS application. So I've already got my React Native uh, project set up here. And what I have here is a basic form where the user will import like their phone number and then when they click on the request OTP, the form will update or expand to request the OTP from the user and then once the user inputs the OTP, then we'll sign in our user. So I'll just head back to this. So we'll first start up by setting up our React Native Firebase and if we take a look at the code, so I don't have anything else, it's just the view at the moment and the uh, logic to update uh, the form to accept the OTP. So I've got the display OTP as a state and this is false. If it's false, it will basically display this uh, phone number input. And then when we click request OTP, then this method will be executed here, this request OTP method, which will set the uh, OTP state to true or the display OTP input to true. And then in here, this is where we'll send out the OTP to the user as well. So let's first get started by adding React Native Firebase to our project. So I mostly use React Native Firebase to implement social authentication and phone authentication. And you've probably checked out my other videos where I go about uh, implementing social authentication like Google authentication and Apple authentication. So let's first get started by installing this. So we'll copy this first line here. Then we'll add that to our project. And then while that is uh, being installed, let's scroll all the way down to iOS setup. So uh, it says here we need to create an iOS application in our Firebase project and the bundle ID has to match the one in our application. So let me first head into my Xcode. Then I'll go into my uh, files here and then I'll select my application. And then under uh, sign in and capabilities. I'll just uh, change the bundle identifier here to something like home dot apple uh, phone on sorry. And then I'll also select the team. And then I'll copy my bundle identifier and then I'll head into Firebase and then create a new project. I'll call it phone auth. Uh, no need for Google Analytics, and then I'll create my project. So that has been installed. Uh, let's just continue with our setup here with Firebase. And then we'll add an iOS application. And then here under Apple Bundle ID, we'll paste in the bundle identifier that we just copied. Oops. Copy that again, paste it in, and then we'll just register app. And then download the Google services info P list. And click next, next, next. Then go to console. Okay, so that is done. Uh, next up, we need to add the file that we just downloaded to our project in Xcode. So back in Xcode, just click on the drop down here and then select me uh, the first folder here or the app folder. And then we'll go on to add files to phone auth. And then we'll head into downloads and then get our Google service info P list and then click add. And then in here, in our service, our Google service info P list, we need the reserved client ID. So if you've uh, gone through the React video that I did, you'll know that when implementing phone authentication, we need to verify the user either using uh, a recapture form. So in order to do this, we need to first get the uh, reserved client ID and then heading to 
info. So we'll just click on Phone North again and then under Info. You'll scroll down under URL Types. We'll click Add. And then we'll paste this in URL Schemes. So this is required in order for us to uh, have the recapture pop up when we uh, verify the user. And then we should be good from here. So we'll just clean our project and then uh, let's continue from the uh, setup here. Next, we need to add this line in our appdelegate.m file. So back in Xcode, appdelegate.m, which is this one here. Uh, right at the top there, we'll just add that. And then we also need to copy this and then add it to the dead finish launching with options uh, method. So back in Xcode, it'll be this method here, dead finish launching with options, and then we'll just paste that in there. And click save. We can close that. And then before we build, we need to run our pod installs. So we'll just copy this line here, pod install repo update so cd into ios and then port install there and then while that is still uh, installing let's go into our firebase project and enable authentication and then we'll select phone as our provider and save So that is done, we'll just CD out of that. And then we'll go back to React Native Firebase and then scroll to authentication. So we need to uh, add the authentication module. So we'll add this to our project. So we'll copy that command and then add it. And then we'll just run pod install once more after this is done. Once that is done, CD into iOS. And then just run pod install once more. And then once the pod install is done, then we can uh, go ahead and start implementing phone authentication. So I'll just head to phone authentication in the meantime, and then we'll just scroll down. And then, so we'll just give this a moment. Okay, that is done. We'll CD out of that, and then we can uh, focus on the app.js file now. So first things first, let's import this line. So import auth from React Native Firebase forward slash auth. So import that. And then we'll need to uh, make our request OTP function an async function. So we'll just add async to that. And then all we need to do from here is just copy uh, these two lines here. And then we'll just need a state uh, for the confirmation. So let's just create a new state. We'll call it confirmation. So what's going to happen is that uh, our method will send a OTP using this method here. So once we've confirmed the user's device, basically what's going to happen here is that there's going to be a recapture window that's going to pop up where we uh, confirm the user's device and then it's going to send the OTP to the phone number that we provide. So we're going to have to pass along the phone number, which we're going to get uh, in this state here, which is phone number. And then if that's successful, we'll get a confirmation, which we'll store there. And then we'll use that confirmation to verify the OTP that has been sent to the user. So if we scroll down here, we have an OTP input, uh, which is this one here. So we don't have a state to store this OTP input. So let's create one and we can just copy uh, this here. So we have a state here called code. We can just copy it. Add it as a value to our text input here, so it will be code, and then on change text, we will set our code. There we go. 
and then when the user signs in or clicks the sign in button will just uh, confirm the OTP. And so as I, as I mentioned, if I run my application once more here, uh, let's just run it here first. So let's clean build, then build application. So the build was successful. Uh, let's go ahead and launch the application. Okay. Uh, so what should happen here, as I mentioned, uh, when we click on the request OTP button, uh, the form will expand to display the uh, OTP input. And now since we added these two lines, what's going to happen is we're going to have a pop-up that's going to request us to verify uh, that we're not a robot using the Google reCAPTCHA. And then if the verification is successful, it will send the OTP to the phone number that we've uh, inputted here. And then it's going to set a confirmation uh in the state here that we have so set confirmation and then now when we sign in basically we want to use that confirmation to verify the otp that the user uh, inputs so let's have that verification uh, confirmation in this sign in method and to do that we'll just head back to uh, the documentation here and then we'll copy this uh, method here or these lines here so we'll just paste them there and then this also has to be an async method so uh, if this confirmation is successful, basically what's going to happen is it's going to create a user in our Firebase and then the, the sign-in will be successful as well. So sign-in with confirmation code and then maybe we can also just uh, console log sign-in. Uh, let's try that out. And then phone number, we'll just need to add the country code. So we just add that country code. And then I'll also record my phone uh, just to uh, show you that I will receive the OTP on my device. So let me just do that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and enter my number here. OTP then let's go ahead and verify that we're not a robot so I'll select the bridges and verify there we go then I'm just waiting for the OTP to be sent to my device. And there it is. And then I'll enter the OTP here. So it's 489097. And then sign in. Uh, let's just have the terminal on this side so that it console logs that we signed in. So I'll click sign in. It says invalid code. Oops. Uh, so this confirm here actually has to be confirmation instead of So let's change that and then we also need to uh, change this set confirm to set confirmation. So that's where the issue is. Let's just change that. Okay, and then that should fix that. So uh, let's just try once more to request the OTP. So we'll just head back to sign in with phone number, request OTP. then verify we're not a robot and then it should come in in a sec so it's still the same OTP and then let's just click sign in okay and then there we go so it says user signed in let's just check Firebase to confirm and there we go so yeah uh, that's pretty much it with the phone authentication so to get the state of the user obviously from here you can just have like an on auth state changed and then that's when you can redirect user to whatever page you need to redirect them once they've signed in. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Uh, cheers. Till next time.